We are here with Sam Weirhead, and uh, my name is Timon, and we work at Setup. And we thought we'd do a little interview. We just had the startup weekend, and we just found out there were two winners, not just the general overall winner, but also an open source winner. So Sam, tell us an open source winner. How did you choose that, and what, what happened there? Mm -hmm. Um, well, we, we basically came to a decision on one particular startup um, whose name was uh, Escape Room. And this is basically a group of uh, people who uh, had heard about this concept of um, building escape rooms, basically uh, physical spaces where you go into a space with a couple of friends and you've got half an hour to, or, or a certain time period to try and break out by solving puzzles, by breaking codes, by um, playing with mechanical switches, whatever it is. Um, uh, and basically it's a very open style of, uh, of game uh, in terms of it's, it's got huge potential to be used in many different ways, to be used for educational purposes, for pure fun, to be used in, uh, for, for software, for hardware hackers to play around with. Mm. And uh, although the, the idea was not fully fleshed out by the end of the 54 hours we had here, um, it shows a huge potential to be used uh, uh, by the maker culture, creating uh, various different um, uh, 3D objects to print out, to adjust, to, to improve other people's work, um, for open source coders to create all sorts of different software-based uh, games. And so uh, we really kind of saw the, the great potential of this idea, even though it's really only in its infancy right now. Right. We think it can go, can go a long way and can be really inspiring. Uh, if, as they hope to do, it is made uh, into an open source project mm. to create a community of open source hardware developers and software developers. Did you find a lot of these companies trying to, or these startups trying to use open source? That, did you find interesting things there in general? Uh, there were a couple of other ones. Um, uh, Peer.io was doing an interesting um, uh, open education um, uh, mm. platform. Um, but in general, the open source idea is not very well spread throughout the startup community. It tends to be that there's quite a rigid kind of style of business model development and um, uh, within startups you've got your kind of angel investments, your funding rounds, your venture capital and things and they tend to push startups in one particular direction. Um, uh, a very accelerated, ramped up kind of competition fighting with the other yeah. various startups to have one kind of glorious winner that will eventually sell for a yeah. billion to, to Facebook. Um, that doesn't fit so well with open source which tends to be more slow growth, community oriented um, and uh, generally not necessarily uh, a non-profit but not an accelerated growth mm. to maximize kind of uh, the, the IPO at the end. So. So, but you were a mentor this weekend, did you find people open to the idea at least or that they... Uh... Yeah, I think the idea was, was quite useful uh, when suggesting it to people basically because um, people were working along the, um, the, the kind of uh, ideas of the, the business model canvas which is a certain way for looking at um, business models and working out where your customer base is and things like that. And that does uh, emphasize a certain way of thinking about how to structure a business, what the important aspects of it are. And so when you come into a situation like that where people are planning out their business on this grid yep. and you kind of tell them what the open source version of their business might be, they might not necessarily take it on, yep. but they realize that they're looking at it in a very narrow way and there are so many other opportunities, so many other ways that they can look at the problem um, and maybe they're looking at it in a totally different mm -hmm. Different way. So has your idea changed? Like, what did you expect when you came into this weekend when we asked you to join us? I really didn't have too much of a clear idea of what to expect because there's, um, as I said, open source culture is quite separate from, from startup culture generally. Um, and uh, I felt that it was an interesting opportunity to at least try to, to spread the idea amongst people who maybe uh, hadn't uh, heard about open source outside of software before to make them realize that there's huge ecosystems developing an open design and open source hardware and open data and uh, try to, to convince them to at least give it a look. Yep. Um, and it was partially successful. <laughs> Certainly uh, a number of people were very excited by it, um, were very interested in um, the, the, the different ideas and it'll be great if uh, they can incorporate that into their work. Cool. Are there um, companies outside of uh, the startup uh, weekend that you think they should look to or that are good examples of uh, open source companies, whatever that might mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's um, one classic example is Arduino. So this is the um, uh, company kind of leading the open source microcontroller market, small little uh, uh, miniature computers basically that you can plug in sensors and uh, motors and do all sorts of exciting things with, make robots, whatever you want. And these guys are basically selling a product which uh, they release under an open license. So you can copy this product if you want. People can make cheaper versions in factories in China. And you might think that's a terrible business model. There's no way that can possibly survive. Right. 
but it works because they've really developed a huge community around it. They've really worked on, on their brand, they've uh, uh, made it, they've encouraged people to uh, hack and improve the device, to build amazing things on it, they uh, promote all sorts of uh, events that help out make a culture, and so they've got this wonderful reputation. And so if I have the choice between buying a cheap, unknown model from China or a slightly more expensive Italian-made Arduino, I'm going to go for the Arduino every yeah. time. Yeah. So that's a great uh, hardware e example. Another is Premium Cola, an organization that started as a, as a fork of an old uh, cola company, and they are really a, a social business. Their, their business only exists to hack the economy in which it exists mm -hmm. because they are trying to show that companies can be a lot more than just doing whatever shareholders tell you to do. Um, they are trying to be um, uh, as ethical as possible. They're trying to pay everybody in their ecosystem an equal amount of money. Um, they're not just trying to maximize profits to the exclusion of all else. So that's another yeah. great uh, collective, uh, so collective maybe organization. Maybe recognizing in open source the value of community and, and uh Absolutely, and respecting the community yeah. as well. So giving them uh, power and control to make their own decisions yeah. about uh, uh, how much they give to the, to the company yeah. um, and respecting their, their input um, yeah. as well. So. And respecting the end user was one of the things you explained that you were looking for as well. Mm. Um, did, yeah, that's interesting yeah. as well as an yeah, open source point of view there. Okay, um, taking a wider picture on the open source everything idea that Setup was exploring this year and that you have been exploring for a whole year as well, um, what do you see happening there? Like, uh, do you think th there is a future in a, a, an open source everything world? I think it's a very, it's a very. There are a lot of bright possibilities, but it's certainly, it's not certain. It's not absolutely clear that we are 100% heading towards open source everything. Um, this is basically just because, uh, as you can kind of see in the the software world at the moment. Um, you've got a number of really big organizations that are doing things in a very proprietary way that are not uh, uh, giving the, the users the, the freedoms that they deserve. Um, and these companies have the most convenient products. They have the products that are the, the most well designed, they are smooth, efficient, mm -hmm. and um, pretty nasty from a privacy point of view, yeah. um, but uh, they work very, very well. And so if open source is really going to, to take on these big existing companies and the traditional methods, they need to do so in a way that is easy and convenient for people yeah. to, uh, to use. So that means breaking out of the kind of the nerdy starting points of open source and uh, going into this, this uh, much wider area. So that's why it's important for people to, to come along and try and talk about open source at things like Startup Weekend. Yeah. Uh, to take the idea outside of just, just software and technical things and start putting it into areas like open source parties and open source underwear and those kind of things to make people realize the concept is very applicable in a lot of areas and very valuable. And there might be a need for more open source design as well to create products that are not just open source but attractively open source. Mm. So that means you need to you need to inspire the designers, you need yeah. to inspire the people that, that are excited about uh, aesthetics, about, uh, use, uh, uh, about user interfaces, yeah. you need to get them excited about it and once they're excited about it, then we have a much better chance of uh, creating an open source future. Cool. Finally, you are, you've explored so many things in your own year. You create open source toothpaste, all kinds of like knitting, all kinds of things. Are there things that you uh, think are things that people should explore in the near future that might be interesting to open source? Yeah, I think the, uh, in terms of emerging trends, I think that the DIY bio movement is really fascinating, um, especially because you have a situation, for example, with genetically engineered uh, uh, organisms where they have this terrible reputation because the only people that are currently doing them that seem to be allowed to do them are these her incredibly frightening companies that are only maximizing profits. Whereas if that technology was in the hands of, of, uh, of everyday people, in the hands of people who weren't just trying to profit, but were actually trying to improve the world, <clears throat> then that technology could be used for good. But as it stands right now, the technology, which has enormous potential, yeah. is only being used in, a, in a terrible ways. Right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think that's it for now. And I say let's get back to the party. Sounds good. All right.